I'm, this is so great, I am so proud to play a supporting role this afternoon in the Grandpa Steve and Grandma Linda show with our eight Technicolor grandchildren. <laughs> they're amazing, and the question is, how the hell do we do the things that they're talking about? I'm old, I started in 1971 when I was 22 years old. Oh my God, it was so great to plan. Let's see, quadratics. Page 72 and 73, yeah. I'm gonna do example one, that's it. How do you possibly compare the way in which I used to plan a lesson in a teeny box to what we're asking every single one of you to do, do, do today? How do we do the data? How do we do the engagement? How do we do what we've talked about when we face this deluge of resources? There they are. Just look at that page. Look at the fact that we've got dance lessons, we got learn zinger, we got balance assessment, we got step, step, step to math. Every one of you knows. We got Robert Kaplinsky's amazing new lessons. We've got the illustrative math kind of project. And so I'd like to do an advertisement. I'd like to say that not only do we have all those resources, but this guy goes online tonight. This is the new NCTM attempt to say, darn it, the answer is the quality of teaching. It is about teaching and learning. And inside the back cover and on 52 pages in this book, we have a guide to planning. We have what I believe and what the people that wrote this book believe is the way in which we finally come together as a profession about what is teacher preparation and what is important and what should people be doing and what should we be doing with coaching. And the question I have for you is, how the hell do I do all that? How do I do it efficiently? How do I meet all those kinds of things? Note to Steve, start talking about the next slide, which I didn't have any time to do. But I mean, you stop and realize that when we think about planning, what is my goal? What are my tasks? What are my activities? How do I orchestrate learning? How do I gather evidence? And Alana is so right. There is no way that Teach Like a Champion answers those kinds of questions. My work in coaching, your work in planning says there are four critical elements. We start with the math, the tasks, Yes, the instruction and the assessment. I mean, in fact, when I look at a lesson, I want to know what math, what is your learning goal? I want to know how you're going to convey that. I want to know what tasks you're going to use. I want to know what evidence you're going to gather. The only way that I know how to help each other in doing that and capturing that is to build a coherent, sensible, one-page lesson plan. I am so tired of 19-page lesson plans. I'm so tired of us being asked to spend time planning when what's important is capturing in one page, there they are, the critical elements. And so I think we need to spend a lot of time saying, hell no, we will not. Heck yes, we will do those. What is your purpose? What is your task? What is the evidence? What are your notes? What are the nuances? And then, damn it, attach your slides and your worksheets. So how do we do this? How do I help people in PLCs? So I'm going to be doing my learning goal. And my learning goal starts with a common core standard. And then I go searching. I think that the real use of resources today, the trick to all of this stuff, making sense of it is it is a data gathering exercise. I go to Illuminations. Illumination gives me this awesome task. I'll never use this with kids. But the commentary tells me so much about the misconceptions. The task gives me ideas that I never had before. I go to Learn Zillion, and Learn Zillion tells me things that help me understand what the heck the crazy language that Jason and Bill and Phil wrote in the Common Core mean. I don't know what the hell a constant proportionality is, and so I go to this tape. I go to that tape. Nobody knows. I'm not going to use it with my kids. I might use it with my kids. I might steal three slides from Learn Zillion. But that gathering evidence gathering information coming from all those resources. I then have all that stuff and I come back and I try and be coherent. I've got to organize it into some coherent whole. And so notice, it's not just the Common Core standard, it's which piece of those gigantic standards. It's now what is my warm up and what kind of tasks and all that stuff. I produce a set of slides, you want to know what I'm going to do? You look at my slides, you look at my worksheets, you look at what tasks, you look at what I'm going to give the kids. I put my slides together and I have planned a lesson that allows me to adjust it, to change it. Why bother? Why bother? Because, gang, you all know none of this is possible if we don't organize instruction. None of this is possible if we don't use planning to build a coherent, organized lesson. You know what we have when we see classes. There is no flow. There is no coherence. There's choppiness. And instead, when we plan, we gather quality. When we plan, we enhance 
learning. Thanks.